Hi, my name is Olivia Purcell, and this is my policy recommendation for the Water Boil Advisory on Indigenous Reserves. A water advisory, according to the CDC, states that you should use bottled water or tap water. This is because a boil water advisory means that your community's water has or could have germs that could make you sick, meaning you have to wash your hands carefully, boil your water if you're going to use it for cooking, drinking, or brushing your teeth, and making sure you avoid getting water in your mouth while showering. This also includes using disposable dishes and cutlery to avoid having to use water to wash your dishes. The water boil advisory crisis for Indigenous reserves has been a long-standing issue, dating all the way back to 1995. Although the Canadian government has made plans to reduce the long-term and short-term advisory, they have fallen short on their promises. When Trudeau and the Liberal government returned to office in 2015, it was promised that all the long-term water boil advisories would be gone by March 2021, which sadly has not been reached. A long-term water boil advisory is an advisory set for more than one year, whereas a short-term advisory is under one year. This explains why there are so many more long-term than there are short-term, and the long-term are actually the ones that that are of priority. Water Today is a volunteer organization that tracks water advisories across Canada. They send out volunteers to get real-time data and collect um, information about the water boil advisories. According to Water Today, there have been 834 boil water advisories in Canada. Although not all active, still a shocking amount. Currently, there are 42 long-term drinking water advisories, which is down from the 161 in 2016, and 27 short-term water advisories with data that has been collected from the Water Today and the Canadian government. Within this presentation on the water crisis, we will be going over the three different topics, the ideas, institutions, and interests involved. The government vowed to end drinking water advisories on Indigenous reserves by March 2021. Canada is a very water-rich nation, but somehow it lacks clean water to Indigenous communities. As the UN states, water is a basic human right. In the article, Too Many First Nations Lack Clean Drinking Water and It's Ottawa's Fault, says Auditor General, it states that the federal government hasn't done enough to give Indigenous communities access to drinkable water. Even without COVID-19, the government was going to miss miss the March 2021 deadline. Senior government officials said that COVID did put that on a hold, but the March 2021 deadlines were still unobtainable. And now, as we're in December of 2021, we see that that is still proven to be wrong, as there are 42 active long-term water boil or water boil advisories. Canada has shown patterns of overpromising and underperforming, leaving Indigenous reserves disappointed and in distress. The audit finds that the Liberal government won't meet the goal to lift all the water boil advisories for several years, which again, in contrast to the promise that they made would be March, 2021. Safe Water First Nation states that 73% of indigenous water systems are at medium to high risk of contamination, meaning without, even without the water boil advisories, there still are places that are high, they're at high risk. Some water boil advisories date back to 1995 meaning that the water advisories are 20 years old. This is progress, but not quick enough. The Equalit Water Contamination Crisis Exposure Vulnerabilities across Canada states that Equalit is an example of how these upgrades would dramatically improve rapidly growing communities. The Federal Government of Canada Municipalities estimates that municipalities need more than $50 billion to upgrade water and wastewater infrastructure compared to the $5.2 billion that has only been invested, according to the Canadian government. Clean water and the wastewater funds must be expanded before any progress can be made. Canada has no legally enforceable drinking water standards. This has resulted in many of these guidelines being weaker than existed in existing countries. Indigenous leaders are suing the government for not providing clean drinking water, and ministers admit they are right. The audit found that water advisories were lifted because of interim measures rather than effective long-term measures, meaning they were trying to get it done quickly so that they could say that they had made progress when in actuality it will go back to what it was. Next is institutions. The Federal Government of Canada is an institution that largely affects the water boil advisories as they are the main policymakers and resource funders. A set of criteria ensuring essential infrastructure according to the Canadian government as follows. Feasibility studies, new system design work, interim repairs on existing systems, permanent repairs to existing infrastructures, 
construction on new infrastructures and improving training and monitoring. This means that all the money that they have invested into these projects is what's being done to fix the water boil advisories. So they're upgrading all the systems that they have in existing parts that have outdated infrastructures. This directly correlates to how they improve the water crisis and includes the life cycle of First Nations Community Infrastructure Project. The First Nations Community Infrastructure Project is to support sustainable housing, clean drinking water, and community infrastructure such as school roads and water systems. The current policy in place is the Clean Water and Waste Water Fund, which provides short-term funding of $2 billion. So I actually, if I'm going to be honest, I did a lot of research on the Canadian government website and didn't find if those the 5.2 billion invested and the 2 billion in the clean water and waste fund were correlated. I would assume they're two different things because both of them, um, one was on a drinking water advisories Canada, and then the other was on the clean water and wastewater fund um, section of the Canadian government website. So this program actually targets projects that will contribute to rehabilitation of both water treatment and distribution infrastructure and existing water wastewater and stormwater treatment um, systems um, and the collection and conveyance of infrastructures, the initiatives that improve asset management, system optimization, and planning for a future um, to upgrade water and waterway systems. So um, they also both correlate to each other as some of the infrastructures included in the clean water and waterways fund would be on Indigenous reserves. Um, not only just all across Canada. So the Indigenous Service Canada works collaboratively with partners to improve access to high quality for services for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. Their vision is to support and empower Indigenous people to independently deliver services and address the socioeconomic conditions to their communities. Again, this goes towards with um, the water boil advisory crisis as um, the First Nations Services Canada um, is an, also an advocate for um, these issues and um, they're largely partnered with the Canadian government. So interests include True North Aid, which is an advocacy non-for-profit. Um, their mission is the gift of life, um, basically. <laughs> Without water, they cannot survive as uh, the protectors of our water, Indigenous communities in Canada, have not had safe and accessible water. True North's position to provide boil-free water to all Indigenous communities across Canada um, and get clean and accessible drinking water to reserves. Um, they're a northern Canada-based organization focusing on the northern Indigenous communities. True North Aid has had eight foundational stones of support, so self-determination, reconciliation, water, food, health, housing, hope, and education, making their goal towards clean water a priority. Um, water First is also an Indigenous non-for-profit um, of interest wanting to help address water challenges in Indigenous communities in Canada through education, training, and meaningful collaboration. Their approach to create meaningful collaborations and respectful relationships is to hire and train locally and blend their traditional knowledge and Western science to make the best possible outcome. Water First believes the Indigenous water crisis in Canada is unacceptable and that everyone has the safe right to safe, clean drinking water, as well as accepting donations. Um, one of their main projects to help fight water crisis um, is the Water First Internship, which trains young Indigenous adults for careers in water science. This is a key part in the solution for drinking water. Um, Amnesty International is also a large, um, uh, I guess, helper or advocate uh, for the Indigenous water crisis. Amnesty International released a statement saying they support the findings of the David Suzuki Foundation study on glass half empty. Year one progress towards resolving drinking water advisories in nine First Nations in Ontario, suggesting the following work with First Nations to streamline and simplify the process for capital investment in water infrastructure by identifying roadblocks and reducing bureaucracy. They collaborate with First Nations in co developing and implementing source water, protecting and rest restore restoration plans. Their goal is to fulfill government commitments to implement the United Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. Partially free, prior and informed consent for laws and regulations related to the First Nations water and the UN recognized human rights to safe water and sanitation endorsed by Canada. Amnesty International provides 
a projected view on the Indigenous water crisis in Canada. As global NGO, they're able to spread awareness and use their influence to benefit this issue. So next to identify the options um, of recommendations. So the current option, which is the Canadian government, they have $5.2 billion invested to achieve clean water um, with over 584 projects, including 103 water treatment plants and 481 upgrades funded. Um, their timeline was 2015 to 2020, um, but that wasn't achieved, obviously. And like I mentioned before, there are still 42 current water advisories. So um, obviously that recommendation wouldn't necessarily be ideal as it's one that's already been proposed and it hasn't um, been done successfully. 